Today we're looking at probability and the various things that are related to it. So firstly, let's ask the question, what is probability? Well, probability is how we represent how likely something is to happen. The probability scale goes from 0 to 1. An impossible event will have a probability of 0. A certain event will have a probability of 1. Think of it of 0% up to 100%. The closer the probability is to zero, the less likely it is, and the closer it is to one, the more likely it is. Sometimes you will see a little scale like this, uh, trying to represent how, how likely something is. So you'll see that when there is a 50% chance or a half, then you're going to have an even chance. Anywhere below a half is unlikely, anywhere above a half is likely. Okay, now moving on. We've got three ways that we can express probability. The first way is to use decimals between 0 and 1, e.g. 0, 0,75. That um, also can be expressed as a common fraction, in this case 3 quarters, right? So 3 chances out of 4, or a percentage, 75%. Something that is uh, important for you to note is that all three of these examples are exactly the same probability. Okay. They're all going to work out to the same probability in this situation. All right. So when we deal with events, we look at their events and their likelihoods. All right. So when an event is said to occur at random, it means that all possible outcomes are equally likely. Um, you know, it's it's equally likely that if you flip a coin, you are going to get a heads or a tails. It's equally likely because there are only two choices there. So. When we talk about outcomes, an outcome is the result that we're expecting to get, uh, such as, as I said, flipping of a coin or getting the queen of hearts when drawing cards from a deck. Just to <laughs> point out something to you, when we're talking about decks of cards, we always talk about 52 cards because there are 52 cards in a normal deck and we ignore the two jokers. All right. Okay, going on. Probability is said to be theoretical, since it must be assumed there are no external forces, such as wind, or a sticky card, or anything like that, to influence our outcomes. They are going to happen regardless. Okay, that's also the reason why we ignore the probability of flipping a coin and it landing on its edge. That's close on impossible. And when we want to calculate probability, we usually use the following formula. Probability is equal to the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. Where our favorable outcomes are the events we want to occur, in this case, the Queen of Hearts, there's only one of them, and the possible outcomes um, out of all the outcomes possible, so all the cards in the deck. All right, as I said, there are 52 of them. Let's take a look at another example here. So. We've got a six-sided dice and we roll it. What's the probability of getting a three, an even number, a six, or a number greater than two? Well, if we look at our answers here, there's only one three on our, on our dice and there are six sides. So our probability of three, we always write it as P and then a little uh, super, uh, subscript of a three there, just so you know, it's probability of three. Is one chance out of six, so that can be translated into 0, 0,16 or 16,67. All right, um, you could possibly have that decimal as 0, 0,16 or 1,17, depending on how people want to round things off. But usually, we look at the two decimal places. Looking at the next one, even numbers. Our even numbers are 2, 4, and 6, so there are three possible outcomes out of the 6. Once again, you can see I've got probability of even numbers, so that's a 50% chance, or 0, 0,5. Uh, not a 6, we have five numbers that are not 6 on the dice, so we're going to get 0, 0,83 or 83,33% chance. And finally, a number greater than 2, so we're going to be looking at three, four, five, and six. So there are four possible answers there. So it's a 0, 0,66 or 66, 0, 67 percent. Now the probability given as a fraction could also have been given as uh, two out of three. Okay.
if you were going to simplify that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, relative frequency. So relative frequency is uh, looking at the outcomes that are determined from uh, a result. You do an experiment multiple times over. And because of this, it's known as experimental probability. All right, the way that we show or calculate relative frequency is that the number of times the favorable outcome has occurred over the total number of times the experiment was done. Uh, we can use it to estimate theoretical probability of events, but often the two will not agree. If an experiment is done enough times, though, the relative frequency will usually get closer to the theoretical probability. This is where the basis of all probability theory came from. Someone had to experiment in order to uh, figure out some way of coming up with theoretical probability. So <clears throat> where it's useful is that it can be used to calculate things that would be impossible to use theoretical probability for. One of these examples would be uh, trying to determine whether or not a drawing pin would fall point up or point down when dropped. Due to the size and shape of a drawing pin, it's not equally likely that things will land or they will land perfectly. Okay, So let's take a look at a little example here. We're using a similar sort of question of what, um, what was uh, achieved, but now we're experimenting with these dice. So we're going to still look for the probability of getting a 3, an even number, not a 6, and a number greater than 2. But now we're looking at dice rolls. So someone sat down and rolled a dice a hundred times and recorded the information. All right. So you'll see that we have various frequencies for the various dice rolls. So starting off with the uh, relative frequency results for getting a three, we see that the three was achieved 16 times. So 16 over 100 or 4 over 25. If you were going to simplify that fraction, that gives you uh, 0,16 or 16% exactly in that result. Quite close to the theoretical probability, but a little bit off. The relative frequency of even numbers, I had to take all the even numbers results and add them together, and then I get to 50% of the time, Okay, which is a perfect result for us there. It's just luck of the draw of how things were rolled there. The relative frequency of not getting a 6 there are 89 results out of 100 that didn't get it. So we have an 89% chance of getting not a 6. And then finally, in a number over 2 or above 2, I've added all my values together to get 68, which is over 100. So 17 out of 25 attempts, 68%. Also fairly close to what we had originally. So... These results are close to theoretical probability since there were 100 experiments conducted. If we only did this 10 times or 15 times, 20 times, you would not get this uh, as close to theoretical probability. It's only because we did the experiment so many times that things evened out quite closely. You'll still see that there's quite a variance there. I mean, we achieved 4 22 times. That is not expected. You would have expected it 16,66% of the time. All right, same thing with uh, five, it's way over. Six wasn't achieved as many times as one would expect it to happen. All right, so just to tie up probability, it's all theoretical as to whether or not we will get it, the results there. And you have to look at the number of times that you get your favorable event over the number of times that you made the experiment for relative frequency and for probability, it's the number of favorable events over the number of possible outcomes. All right, well, the number of favorable outcomes over the number of favorable, uh, and number of possible outcomes. All right, so hopefully that's helpful and stay safe.